Welcome everyone. This is Dina from Mark's Group Live. Happy to be reviewing with you today how to work with vendors, including both bills and purchase orders in Zoho Books. After the video is over, feel free to email us at support at marksgrouplive.com for any questions on this subject or anything else Zoho. Be sure to rate this class to helping your fellow Zoho users as well as us to improve the video library. Here are some of the main points we're going to talk about today. First, you can create purchase orders directly in Zoho Books. Vendors and items are required for a purchase order. And then once complete, the order is complete, you can convert a purchase order into a bill. Now let's go into Zoho Books so we can go over um, this in a little bit more detail. So the first thing we need to note here from the dashboard is that we need both vendors and items. Now you can create those directly in purchase orders, but I'm just going to go quickly and show you where you can find those in Zoho Books. So first if you click on contacts under dashboard, and then you have the down arrow at the top. Right now it's set to vendors. If it had been set to uh, something else, you'd be able to click on vendors and see which vendors you have. Next, uh, if you want to see the items that you have, you would go to items and then you can go to items and see which items you have and again you want to do the drop down and you want to go to purchases and then you can see that one of the items we do have is a widget and if you wanted to you could add more as well here now from the con uh, well we'll go through let's go to purchases now and purchase is one of the items. So you have expenses, you have recurring uh, expenses, and then you have purchase orders. Now if we were to click on purchase orders, you can see we have some existing purchase orders that have been billed, looking at the build status. You can do, again, there's a drop down here. This is all purchase orders, but you can have draft, pending, approved, uh, partially billed, etc. Or you can build a new view, maybe by customer if you wanted to. But within purchase orders here, uh, if we just open an existing purchase order, you can see that this is a widget vendor for the widget vendor. <clears throat> $500 was the cost and it's closed. And on the right here, you can see that we have the history, when the bill was created, when it was emailed, and when it was uh, created again. And we can see here that the purchase order includes the vendor. It includes the customer that is being delivered to, and it and it includes the item and description, the quantity, rate, etc. If we go back into, uh, we can go in here and we can create a new purchase order from the purchase orders. And the first thing we need to do is select a vendor. I'm going to select Southwest, but let me just go back to the drop down. You can also from here create a new vendor and you can go through the whole process of creating a, a vendor from here and just to go through it quickly uh, the first thing you need is to you would put in a name the company name <clears throat> uh, John's uh, John's car parts contact display name and then you would decide how you want to display this on the invoice. So I'm going to call it John's Car Parts here. And if you click on the question, it says this is the name that will be shown on invoices, bills created for this contact. You want to probably have an email, john oops, at carparts.com. You can put in a phone number. Uh, mobile. You can add more fields here if you have more contact information. Uh, put in a department, website, and then you can put in other details as well. This is US dollars, payment terms, uh, maybe we want net 15 instead. If they're associated with the price list, we can uh, add that here and we can add price list. Do you want to track payments? Do you have links for them? Uh, other items you can have the shipping the address because obviously you'd need um, some addresses so I'm going to say one two three Main Street USA is the, 
the address. Uh, I'm sorry, so the one, two, three Main Street would go in the address. Attention, we don't need to put that in. Um, Main Town, New Jersey, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And then what you can do is you can click copy billing address, and then you can have the same billing address as the shipping address. And then if you wanted to, you can add some custom fields, some reporting tags, or some internal comments. Um, we're not going to do any of that. So we can save this here. And then you can see as we go back to our purchase order, we have John's car parts and the, and the address because this was where we had selected to uh, create a new vendor. Next, you have the purchase order number. And if you click on the settings, you can enable or disable auto generation. So what you can do is that you can have um, the purchase order automatically generated the number, or if you wanted to add something manual each time, you can do that as well. I'm going to keep with the auto generating. Click Save. If you have a reference for uh, this purchase order, you can put it in. Uh, you can put the date that today is, and then the delivery date. Let's say I want this on the 8th. If there is a Zoho CRM owner for this account, you can put that in so they know who they're contacting. And shipment preference, uh, you can add something if you want to do. We don't have any in here, but you can always add something here. And then you come to the items. So uh, we can, the one item we have in here is a widget. And uh, so you can see here the purchase price is five dollars. The selling price is ten dollars. And then um, just to show this as well, when you go into the purchase, in, when you're selecting your uh, item, you can also see the stock on hand. And here we see we have 159 of these. So I'm going to put it in. You can put in a description. There was one that came up, but you can always either get rid of it or change it. The account you want this to go to is most likely cost of goods sold. The quantity, again, here it's showing what we have on, on um, in stock, what we have in stock, what's committed, and what's available for sale. So I'm going to change this to 11. Um, the rate we saw was 5. If we wanted to change it to something else, we could do that. Um, amount is 55. And again, you can, you can uh, add, you can either you, what you can do here is you can add a new item. You could say whether it's a good or service. Um, you can call it, uh, since we have a car, let's call this tires. You can uh, say how are the units. Is it each or is it a box? I'm going to say each. If you had a SKU number, you can put it in. Sales information, uh, I'm going to sell it for $50. The account will be sales, but I could do something else if I wanted. We could put a description. Purchase rate is uh, five. Going to go into cost of goods sold. We want to track this for inventory. And uh, we can make an inventory asset. Opening stock is, uh, let's say we purchase, um, we have 12 in there. Opening stock rate per unit, five. Save. And then you can see you have the tires in here. And because we put some information on how much in hand, we can see that there's 12 on hand here. Oops. Actually, we didn't choose it. So here's now the tires, cost of goods sold. Uh, let's get four tires um, at $5, etc. And you can see that the purchase order is rolling up the subtotal. If we wanted to include a percent discount, maybe it's a new customer, we want to include a 10% discount. We don't need an adjustment. Um, we don't, we're not going to do any oh, discount account, so we'll, we'll call it um, automobile expenses. If we wanted to do an adjustment, we could. Um, and then you can see the total after the discount is $67.50. We can also add some terms in. We can have this either delivered to, to us or to the customer. And if it's to the customer, 
we can select which customer we want to send this to. Notes that will be displayed. And you can also use, this is a standard template. And if you wanted to, if we had other templates, you can choose a different template here. And then you choose who you want to email it to. Uh, select the email address of the contact to send it to. We have that here. And then we can go ahead and save and send the purchase order. So now the purchase order has been added. And here is the email that we can send uh, showing the purchase order here. And we can choose to send it. So now we can see that the purchase order has been sent and it's open because uh, we haven't, um, it hasn't been received back from the vendor. So what you can see here is now on the right side, we have history. We can show that we created this purchase order and then we emailed it to John. And then here's a view of the purchase order and what it looks like. And what you, we could have done is uh, we could have customized this. We could have changed the template, but we know we didn't have any. We can update the logo and address, manage custom fields, terms and conditions. And then what we can do here also is we can convert this to a bill once we know everything has been delivered. When you click on convert to bill, we want to keep this as John's car parts since that was the vendor we were using. Bill number, uh, we can add in a bill number. I'll just add in one, two, three for now. The order number we have for the purchase order, the bill date. Maybe we want to wait until Friday to bill this since that's our expected delivery date. Um, we said the terms were net 15, um, so that put the March 23rd date. If I change it to net 30, you can see the due date changed, and you can always go in and change that um, regardless. And then you can see that we have um, the uh, 11 widgets. We can select the customer. And then you can see that although the cost was $5 for this widget, or actually, no, the cost was $5 for 11 um, widgets. So this is, um, we have the discount in here. And then you can see that the bill is $67.50. And now we have the bill. So now if we just go look in the bills, let me just uh, save this as open. So just to go back up to purchase orders, you can see that the, the purchase order we just had is now closed because we did convert it to a bill. You can go and view the bill here uh, from this third line on the right side, or we can go into bills and then we can see we have a number of bills here. And the most recent one we have is this open one. And then uh, we can make a payment on this. We can record a payment. Record a payment, pay via check, pay via ACH here. And then if we go to some of the existing uh, bills that we had, we can see that we have one that's overdue. since the due date was December 4th. And then we can go to one that's been paid and it will show you that payment's been made. And this is a paid bill. So we also have here's vendor credits and we don't have any created now, but if we were had the need to have a product returned or canceled, credit note would be received. The vendor credit would either apply to future bills or be recorded as a refund. Now, just to finish up here, there's setting. We always have settings, and we can set preferences. And if we do that uh, based on uh, purchases, if purchase orders here, we can uh, we can say um, different things. When do we want a purchase order to be closed? We converted a, a purchase order to a bill, so you saw that that closed the purchase order. We can say it when it was received. Or we can say when the when the receives and bills are recorded. You have other customization here as well, and then within bills you have some uh, preferences you can define as well in field customization and custom buttons, 
And you can always add a new custom field to a bill as well. So if we were to go back in here, uh, if we go back to our main takeaways, as we said, you can create purchase orders directly in Zoho Books. Vendors and items are required for purchase order. And once you complete a, uh, once complete, you can convert a purchase order into a bill. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out our library for other training videos like this one. If you have any suggestions for other classes or questions about Zoho, please email us at support at marksgrouplive.com. Thanks for watching.